What is going on investors and welcome back to the Everything Crypto Show where we bring you the latest and most important news moving the crypto markets every single day. Now we are back today with another very important episode as Quant has partnered up with one of the largest European banks and the second largest cloud provider globally. We also have Crypto.com finally preparing the full launch of the Kronos Gravity Bridge which I suspect is going to bring a ton of big money over from other blockchains onto the Kronos chain and last but not least we have sam bankman fried finally being exposed with a very interesting article that highlights all of the scams he has been involved in with ftx at the same time that the state securities board is investigating ftx us and in response mr bankman fried man of the banks has threatened to delist a ton of cryptos from his platform that he himself is deeming securities so without further ado it is time to sit back relax grab that morning cup of joe and enjoy the show happy saturday everyone if you have not yet hit that sub and like button and join the everything crypto squad please consider doing so especially if you want to be in the know on everything moving this crazy crypto market now we're gonna hop right in here with the question of the day and today's question is what do you think is the best performing exchange token in the next bull run is it going to be bnb representing the binance exchange crowcoin representing crypto.com or ftt representing ft let me know in the youtube comments down below in my opinion it is a rat race between these top three right now and we have placed our bets on chronos personally but i know that there obviously are differing opinions here so i would like to hear what you guys have to say about that and now we're going to hop right in here with the bitcoin and ethereum charts like we always do and once again bitcoin moving like an absolute snail just above 19k we still cannot get back above that 2018 all-time high of 20,000, and this does lead me to believe that eventually this support at 19k will break and we will go in for a revisit of the june lows at 17.5k and that is where i personally will be looking to dollar cost average a bigger amount into bitcoin and below 17.5k if we do break the june lows i am looking for a retest of 15k and that is where i will be absolutely backing up the trailer and loading up on those sats now actually okay let's talk about the upside targets here on bitcoin although i do think they're quite unlikely and the reason being is that even if we break above that twenty thousand dollar level we are not still bullish on bitcoin we actually need to see a full breakout and confirmation above the 200 week moving average that is sitting at 23.5k so from the current levels that we are at at 19.1 that is a move of about 23 24 percent to the upside and given the fact that we have had almost no volume here on bitcoin for weeks it continues to dry up and most of the volume has been selling pressure it does lead me to believe that we are much more likely to make a move to the downside now ethereum here is also painting a very similar picture for me and the first time we actually called what i would consider to be a pretty solid short on eth was when we topped out at that 2k level pre-merge historically speaking in bear markets the 200 week moving average does act as a very strong magnet for crypto so we did call out that short here from 2k down to about 1300 which made for a nice swing of about 35 percent now we are back at this 200 week and the next thing i said i was i was really looking for here was either a bounce off the 200 week as a level of support as a breakdown in which the 200 week will flip to resistance now given the fact that i expect bitcoin to move to the downside given the fact that ethereum volume is also drying up and we cannot seem to break above 1400 even after trading in this tight wedge now for what is coming up on three weeks I do believe that ETH is prime for another move to the downside. And what this means if we break below the 200 week at 1301, I think we are coming back down here to 1030, which will make for a downside move of about 18 and a half percent. That is another short that I will be taking. Uh, I will be looking to take on. So if we close below 1301 on Sunday on the weekly candle, I will be looking to open up a short position in ETH down to 1030. And you guys know that in the long Long run we are perma bulls on crypto my long-term portfolio is not for sale but there are opportunities to short and make money in the bear market that we usually then just flip into the long-term portfolio anyways so that is why we do review these charts at the beginning of the video and really the main one that i'm watching here is ethereum to see if we close above or below that 200 week moving average so that's what i'm looking for on the charts we will get into the quant chart in just a little bit but first i do want to hop into the bitcoin and ethereum 
Ethereum news, starting off with this very interesting tweet here that I think really highlights the difference between this bear market and every other bear market that we have been in previously. So this tweet says, institutions are coming, whales are accumulating Bitcoin, hash rate hits the all-time high, long-term holders are not selling Bitcoin, crypto has fundamentals. This is something that was commonly thrown around on Twitter in previous bear markets, almost as like a meme. But the difference between previous bear markets and this bear market is that it is no longer a meme. This is reality. We know that institutions like BlackRock, like Fidelity, are just really waiting to get their hands all over crypto. Though they know that that is what the people want, they know that that is trillions of dollars in assets that they could be capturing, and that is why these institutions are really trying to get regulatory clarity so they can begin really just loading up the boat on these blue chips. The hash rate has continued to hit a new all time high, and we're going to talk about what that means in a second from a minor perspective. Long term holders are not selling Bitcoin. We covered yesterday how the balance on exchange has now at four year lows, indicating that long term holders are. Are still keeping their conviction high and purchasing Bitcoin to move it into cold storage and keep it for the long term. And yes, the fundamentals do continue to improve. So it is time to take crypto seriously. In previous bear markets, a lot of people have chopped it up to crypto being dead. And we still see some big entities, some big financial institutions do that, like JP Morgan calling Bitcoin a fraud while at the same time investing millions of dollars into Ethereum infrastructure. That is big money saying one thing and doing the other they want you to sell your crypto to them for cheap because they know where the future of finance is headed and it scares the crap out of them as it should do not give them your crypto for any less than it is worth and these in my opinion are bottom basement prices yes we could go lower but in three to five years i think in hindsight these prices are going to look like deals of a lifetime and that is why i do continue to dollar cost average and buy more on these juicier dips now, we do also have some pure statistics to back this up, including the actual transaction volume growth by region. And this is July 2021 to July of, or sorry, to June of 2022. And you can see here that the slowest rate of adoption was in Eastern Asia with 4%, then Western Europe with 15%, Sub-Saharan Africa at 16%, Eastern Europe growing at 22% in terms of Bitcoin transactions. Then look at this, we got Central and Southern Asia as well as North America growing at 35 and 36% respectively, Latin America at 40%, and the Middle East and North Africa growing at 48% year over year. These these numbers show you guys how early we are. The fact that Bitcoin transaction volume is growing at a respectable one third to 50% basis year over year. We are still incredibly early and this is a growth rate that can continue at least for the next three to five years before we begin to see a slowdown. This is just the beginning of adoption and the fact that it is happening throughout a bear market is an incredibly bullish sign and a real sign of maturation within crypto, which we have been calling for for quite a while now. Now, similarly, we actually went from having only 5% of Canadians owning crypto in 2021 up to 13% of Canadians owning crypto in 2022. And yes, that is a very big increase of over double from 5 to 13%. But if you are as bullish on Bitcoin as I am, if you believe that eventually Bitcoin will be integrated into everyday society and that everybody will have a piece of it in their wallets, then 13% is nothing compared to where this statistic could be a couple of years out and that is the point this rapid adoption is happening but given the total addressable market that crypto has here which in my opinion is global this is still the very beginning phases in my opinion so very important to zoom out and look at the broader picture especially in times like right now when the FUD is high when people are worried about the macro environment and people are not paying attention to the improving fundamentals behind the scenes and I think a perfect example of that is in the Bitcoin miners that we have been discussing pretty frequently on the channel. Now, reason being here is because miners have been getting absolutely destroyed this year. They have been suffering from rising energy costs at the same time Bitcoin's price has been dipping. And you can see a very big correlation here as the Bitcoin price is back at 2020 levels. So is the miner revenue. Now, despite this, we have just seen the network difficulty hit a new all-time high. And if you actually take a look at a one-year chart here and then remove the Bitcoin price, 
price, you would literally think that crypto is in a bull run as network difficulty has gone up from about 22, let's just say 22 on the scale all the way up to about 35. So almost a 50% increase in network difficulty. And similarly here, if you take a look at the hash rate, it has gone up here from about 149 million all the way up to 262 million. And what this signals is that Bitcoin miners, despite the fact that their margins are getting crushed, they are really fighting more than ever to fight for their piece of the network to validate this blockchain and get that reward in the form of Bitcoin. That is incredibly bullish. In fact, this is the, almost the first time in history where we have seen a bear market where the hash rate has not gone down really even once. It has just continued to rip to new all-time highs with slight corrections along the way. Once again, signaling a big fundamental shift in Bitcoin that paints a very bullish picture for the future of this crypto. Now, another thing that I have been keeping my eye on here lately is the Ethereum deflation and it is getting insane, okay? I did not think that it was going to happen this quickly, especially in a bear market, but we did tell you guys from the day that the proof of stake merge actually happened that the magic number on the GUI meter is 15.5. If we see 15.5, that effectively means that gas fees are high enough to ensure that EIP 1559 is burning off more Ethereum than is being minted. So you can see here that as of October 8th, we had actually minted 13,000 new Ethereum Ethereum since the merge and that has now decreased over the past 14 days from 13,000 down to 1700. So we are down over 80% here on all Ethereum that has been minted since the merge. And keep in mind that had we stayed under proof of work, we would have actually minted in the same time period 436,000 new Ethereum compared to the 1,781 Ethereum that has been minted now. So effectively, this is like even over a 95% reduction in issuance to Ethereum. The merge is behaving exactly as expected. And I think it would be very good for investor sentiment if we actually saw Ethereum flip deflationary here since the merge. In fact, if we actually take a look now on a year over year basis, ETH is in fact deflationary by by half a percent on the year and this is in a bear market just think about what happens when we are back in a bull market with increased network activity i think it is going to catch a lot of people off guard and that is definitely something that i am keeping my eye on so although ethereum is a blue chip the second most mature by market cap i still think it is going to be a very dominant performer in the next bull run as people really catch on to the power of the new tokenomics and i would love to see this number go into the negative now we're going to talk about quant my favorite erc20 altcoin that has been shaking and turning a bunch of heads in this bear market and the reason being is that it has been an absolute banging performer in fact the best performer out of the top 100 since we have been talking about it back in may and june at those 43 dollar lows and one of the ways that we have been calling the moves on quant here since the beginning of those June lows is with this trend channel that we have had here on both the bottom and upper trend line. Now you can see here that quant has pretty much bounced perfectly off of this upper trend line until we broke out way above it here on October 16th. And I did say that if we broke out above the upper trend line, we were probably making a move all the way back up to 200. Quant even surprised me here by breaking above 200, going all the way up to 228 before pulling back. So the next thing that I said here was if we could actually bounce off of the upper line of this uptrending channel, that we would most likely make a run back up to 200. We did in fact get a clean bounce here with a little fake out below the trending channel, but this dip, just like every other dip on Quant that really has happened over the past month, got eaten up very, very quickly. So we did bounce off of that 170 level very clean. It looks like we are now making our way back up to $200. So if you did hop in here at that 170 level, that makes for a nice move of about 16% until we do hit $200 again. So what I'm looking for now is a retest of 200. And really, if we don't break above that, I do think we could come back down once again to test this uptrending channel. But if we do break above that, the next level that I am looking for is a retest of 228, which did act as resistance in this previous rip that we've seen on Quant. 
Now, we got to hop into some of the news that I believe has really been moving quant here once again, and that is the fact that HSBC has signed a multi-year agreement with Oracle to help accelerate their digital process and digital transformation. Now, first of all, HSBC is the largest bank in Europe with $11 trillion in assets under custody, and as they evolve their payment systems in the coming years on Oracle's technology, quant will play an important role in allowing for real-world, everyday applications and use cases and that is because as we have discussed on the channel before quant is in fact partnered up with oracle we know that oracle's evp of technology has pretty much said that the only way they can make their digital wallets tokenization and automation a reality for their banking partners is through distributive ledger technology blockchain and smart contracts all of which require interoperability and quant is the solution now we did also hypothesize that hsbc was going to be interested in quant's technology as they were in fact at siebel's 2022 the biggest one of the biggest financial events of the year headed by swift and they talked a lot about the metaverse about digitization really talking about key things here like digital wallets, virtualization, automation, and tokenization. And you can see here that their global head of digital innovation said that we firmly believe the tokenized technologies and their associated economies are here to stay. We want to be the ecosystem platform provider to power up the Web3 economy rather than compete with that economy. So a very big shift in sentiment here between the way that European banks and U.S. banks view crypto. The U.S. the U.S. banks here like J.P. Morgan are so resistant towards crypto because they fear it, while these European banks like HSBC are just adopting it and embracing it for the benefits that it has. And that is why I think there is going to be a very big status shift here in the economic status of these countries. And that is why I also believe that on a side note, companies like Crypto.com are really targeting these countries like Europe for that crypto adoption so we did hypothesize following cbos that hsbc was in fact going to work with quant and not even a week later we got this announcement from them so this goes to show you guys that it does help to do the research to dig behind the scenes because these are not connections that could have been made really just by just by a very brief look but by really connecting the dots here it was pretty obvious that hsbc was in fact interested in quant and now they are going through oracle the second largest cloud provider in the world world to access this technology and i think that a lot of people really underrate the quant and oracle partnership and this thread from just a tech guy summarizes it very very well so this is a quote from gilbert verdi and rather multiple quotes and he says since the announcement of oracle certification we have had an influx of demand from oracle clients we only expect this demand to continue Oracle blockchain is now interoperable because of Overledger providing future proof interoperability for their 430,000 plus customers, many of whom have been asking for this and referring potential customers to us. The second biggest software company in the world worth 252 billion is public about our partnership. We have had a we've had meetings with Oracle regarding the Swedish Central Bank. That's not a part of the five that we are already talking to, and these clients are not small clients either just to give you a ballpark in a previous company our annual spend with oracle was in the range of about 200 million dollars now consider this taking a look at quant that currently has a market cap of just over 2 billion and i think that this has a lot of room to run and given the fire tokenomics and the incredible scarcity of this token i really do think this is easily a four figure coin in the next bull run and longer term a five figure coin so that is what i am looking for when when it comes to quant now we got to talk about one more iso coin here in the form of hbar as native staking has finally arrived we did talk about this yesterday but today is the official day that your rewards are going to be distributed so if you guys would like a more in-depth tutorial or explanation of how you can start earning some passive income on your hbar let me know in the youtube comments down below and that is something that i will plan on covering in a future video now we're going to spend the rest of this video talking about centralized exchanges, mainly FTX and Crypto.com. And for starters here, you guys may have seen this clip of crypto YouTuber BitBoy pretty much calling out Coinbase and FTX CEOs, Brian Armstrong and Sam Bankman-Fried, saying they were pretty much trying to permanently ruin crypto. And I'm not going to play the clip for you guys because it is definitely very vulgar, but he is really speaking out of passion. And basically what he says here is that for those of you that don't know, BitBoy is 
is trying to pass some sort of a bill, some sort of crypto legislation that is for the people, whereas Sam Bankman fried and Brian Armstrong are trying to pass a bill that favors big money and absolutely shafts retail. Just like it has always been, these big corporate entities, this big money does not want retail, does not want middle class to ever be on a level playing field, and they are actively trying to suppress us and only put crypto in their advantage. So that is what he is speaking about in this clip. If you guys want to watch it, you can definitely find it pretty easily on social media. But after this clip came out, or really before and after, there has been a ton of controversy surrounding Sam Bankman-Fried as of late. And you guys know we've been saying for a while that he is definitely a smart investor that has been buying the dip in this bear market, but he has definitely been up to some very shady things. And that is why I have been keeping my eye on Mr. Man of the Banks. It is literally in his name. He is the bank man. So for starters here, Texas State Securities Board is investigating FTX US, which is pretty ironic considering that his whole shtick here has been trying to suck up to regulators to really get FTX as the first fully regulated exchange that can both act as a bank and as a crypto asset provider. Now, basically what happened here is the Texas State Securities Board is investigating them over alleged unregistered securities offerings, claiming that their yield bearing account uh, they basically are classified as unregistered securities, very similar to the now bankrupt crypto lender Voyager Digital's product. And we're also going to talk about the acquisition news regarding FTX and Voyager Digital later. But all you need to know here is that these uh, state securities board is in fact accusing FTX of selling unregistered securities. Now, in response to this, what does Sam Bankman Free do? Instead of stepping up to the plate and defending the crypto industry, he announces that he is going to delist crypto assets in the US that it deems may be securities. So this goes to show you right off the bat, he does not care about crypto, about fighting for the future of this space. He is just trying to do what he has to do with, to comply with regulators and really put FTX on top. That is how he is doing it. So now what he's claiming is that his own legal team is going to do an analysis of an asset according to the Howey test. And if that analysis finds it to be a security, they are going to treat it as such, pretty much doing exactly what the SEC did with XRP. And we all know how flawed that logic is. So really, this just shows you his true colors right off the bat. And it does not stop there. OK, we've also been calling him out as of late for literally posting his buy orders of FTT on a weekly basis, like considering that. He is the CEO of FTX and FTT is the native token of this platform. I don't know how he continuously gets away with this, but that's just sort of like a small nitpick I have. Now we're going to get into the big stuff here, starting off with his current thoughts on crypto regulation, the legislation that he is trying to get passed. And there are a couple of concerns here. So for starters, this is what he says. Everyone should respect OFAC's sanction list, both centralized and decentralized applications, effectively saying that DeFi should be OFAC, which effectively means that they can freeze funds similar to what happened with Tornado Cash. Now, moving on here, he also says that assets should be able to be frozen on the blockchain. Like, this is ridiculous, and you can't make this stuff up. He literally wrote this in, in what he is looking to as his current regulation process for crypto. And last but not least, he said that if you host a website that makes it easy for U.S. retail to connect to and trade on a DEX, so something like Uniswap, you would likely have to register it as something like a broker-dealer and would have to have KYC obligations. So what he's saying here is that now a DeFi DEX like Uniswap, like the swapping feature within the Crypto.com DEX, DeFi app would actually have to register as a broker dealer, effectively making it so that DeFi is no longer a thing in the US. And this would completely eliminate the US from the crypto race. But you know why Sam Bankman Free doesn't care? Because that would only mean good things for his very own platform. And that shows you exactly what he is here for. Now, moving on here, he says the clearest way to help protect investors is to provide transparency and protect and protect, sorry, blah, prevent scams. And now we had a very good thread here from croissant.eth that pretty much breaks down all of the scams that Sam Bankman Fried has been involved in after claiming that he is only here for investor protection, just like the SEC. So this token once acquired 10% of all DeFi total value locked in a single weekend, and this is big data protocol. 
One billion of the TVL belonged to Alameda Research, owned by Sam Bankman Fried, who dumped it relentlessly on plebs from 114 million market cap down to just 581,000 today. You can thank Sam Bankman Fried and the Alameda team for dumping that on retail. Next, the infamous Stargate dumping carnage. The Alameda team sniped 25 million auction in the first block and claimed they would not be selling for at least three years. And a short time after, they secretly sent 8. 4 million STG to FTX and Binance from $4.14 down to $0.42 cents today. They even deposited $1 billion in Iron Finance liquidity pools only to dump the farm tokens and withdraw a few days later. Iron Finance would then suffer a bank run, causing the stablecoin to depeg. The governance token hit $60 and collapsed to like one-eighth of a penny as of today. And last but not least, how about Convex over here in which Alameda had $847 million deposited to farm and dump 70 ETH worth of Convex every single day. This farm and dumping operation would last for months and they almost single-handedly brought the price of Convex down to $2. Now in early 2021, Alameda reached out to Reef for a large investment at a 20% discount. Reef agreed, sending uh, this 20 mil worth to Alameda, which was then immediately sent to Binance. Then they asked for an additional 60 mil, which the team denied. Alameda then threatened to remove Reef from FTX. And then we saw very similar tactics here with Trader Joe, where Alameda continued to farm and dump Joe in a series of swift trades, in which it was a dump of $2 million, resulting in huge red candles for the relatively illiquid token. So, do you think he gave any craps about dumping that on retail? Because I definitely do not think so. Now, we are back here with the latest with really just the latest scheme from Sam Bankman Freed in the form of Aptos. I warned everybody about this project the day before it launched on centralized exchanges. I said, do not invest on this in this project based on the tokenomics in which Sam Bankman Freed does in fact have a stake in it. Now, what do you know? He did also agree to actually list this token on his very own FTX exchange. Geez, I wonder what the financial incentive would have been in doing that. And I pretty much warned the day before this token went live that this is purely a VC scam to use retail as exit liquidity. And that is exactly what happened here. You can see that Aptos actually hit the top of a candle here on Binance at $59.38 and went all the way down to $6.87. It is now trading in the $7 to $8 range. So Sam Bankman Freed really being exposed here for all of the shady nonsense. And now on top of that, it has in fact been confirmed that FTX has been allowed to acquire $1.4 billion worth of Voyager's assets. So now what he is going to do is take Voyager's assets, force everybody who wants their assets back to sign up with FTX to get that money back. And he is going to continue playing this white knight while behind the scenes, really just continuing to screw over retail and he does not care. Okay. So that is why I'm really like keeping a very close eye on him. And I don't think it's hard to see that despite the fact that he is a very, very savvy investor, that he is also a very shady man and uh yeah he's definitely someone that i would not trust with a 10 foot pole now we're gonna wrap this up here talking about the chronos gravity bridge as we did actually get some news on october 20th that kind of flew under the radar even i wasn't actually aware of this news and i came across it today and effectively, the next upgrade that is being proposed for the Pioneer 11 testnet is being released on October 26. Now, the reason that Pioneer 11 is such a key, key upgrade that I have been keeping my eye on is because it is going to introduce the final mainnet launch of the decentralized gravity bridge, effectively connecting the Kronos Pioneer 11 testnet to the Ethereum Gowerly testnet for asset transfers. And once we are finally done out of this testnet phase, this will in fact be on the mainnet in which people will be able to directly bridge their assets from ethereum over to chronos now the way this functions is very simple you have an erc20 token that you want to bridge over to chronos it is going to get locked up on the erc20 side and then give you basically a crc20 equivalent on the chronos side and then you will be able to interact with this ethereum token 
through any Kronos decentralized application. And this is why I think that the Gravity Bridge will bring a ton of total value locked over to the Kronos chain. Now, similarly, or likewise, if you would like to move this Kronos asset back to Ethereum, you simply use the bridge again. It is going to burn the CRC20 token and unlock that ERC20 token that you had initially locked up. Now, they did actually include some more upgrades here, including multiple attestations to be processed within a block and effectively this just makes it so that the speed and functionality of the bridge is further increased. In addition, the storage can now be optimized by simplifying the structure, and they also strengthen the security of the bridge by changing the block delay after Ethereum merged and added more safeguards. Now for me, these security upgrades and safeguards are the most important thing coming out of this upgrade because as we know, these bridges have been a major target for hacks this year. In fact, I believe the majority of the crypto hacks that have happened this year have been through bridges and the reason being is that inherently crypto is not meant to be bridged if it is native to a blockchain it is meant to stay on that blockchain and i don't know the whole technical side of things but what i know is there must be some some sort of inherent weakness in these bridges that hackers do take advantage of now if there is any team that i have faith in getting a bridge correct i do think it is the crypto.com and the chronos team but that is definitely why it is important that they focus on this security and if they can create this bridge to be one of the most secure in the space it is going to put a lot of trust from the people from the community in the chronos chain which i think could translate to a bunch of total value locked making its way over to chronos and in these decentralized applications that it does have to offer so really this gravity bridge if done correctly opens up a ton of doors for chronos and that is why i am so excited for this upgrade so on that note i hope you guys did enjoy the content in today's video you know what to do if you made it all the way to the end you are an absolute champion let me know in the youtube comments down below and claim that champion status also let me know your answer to the question at the beginning of the video on that note i am wishing you all an amazing saturday and i hope to catch you in the next one peace out for now